Can you say hi? Say, so yeah, I'm still alive. Still alive. Me and my tooth. Yeah, you and your tooth. Hello there everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on Floss Tube, and I am here on this Wednesday, July 19th, 2017 with video number 127 titled To Be Determined. We will we'll see what happens with that. Uh, full disclosure, this is approximately my 18th take of this introduction here. Uh, I have a wee bit of a headache today um, that has actually grown starting yesterday. Um, so my words are a little foggy. I'm in migraine fog, I guess you would say. Um, so bear with me. <laughs> this one could be a little bit interesting, but we'll we'll just go with it. A uh, couple of things to talk about before I start talking about the things I'm here to talk about. Um, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for your um, kind comments and for taking some time out of your day to watch me. Um, I'm going to talk to you about, I'm going to answer a few questions. I've got a bunch of projects that I've worked on. Um, I have um, what I would consider the end of my stitch from stash. Um, I have my currently obsessing and some knitting talk um, for real this time. So quite a few things to talk about. Uh, but before I get into any of that, I just want to thank you for um, all of your well wishes for my weekend away. Um, it was a very short trip for the family reunion. Um, we were gone for barely 24 hours um, and ate enough food to fill a week. Um, just totally total gluttons. Um, Dan and I both are trying to watch our... Uh, watch our diets a little bit and we just went hog wild <laughs> this weekend um, so yeah uh, coming back to a more restrictive diet was hard but what are you gonna do um, and yeah it was a really good weekend so um, like I said we were only gone for like 24 hours and so I was able to stitch on all of the things that I had planned on um, which is great. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. Um, and we're gonna start with the Q&A section. Uh, so the first question I have thought about ever since it came in about a week ago, um, and it is from Robin J. And Robin asks if I have any advice on how to find stitching time. Um, and I don't know that I'm necessarily the person to ask, only because if I'm not working, then my stitching time is kind of my own. I am not responsible for any other humans at this point in my life. I mean, you know, I have a husband and a dog and et cetera, but I don't have small humans to keep track of. Um, and so I don't know if I'm necessarily the person to ask about finding stitching time. However, um, for instance, I know... Um, Sherry Burkett has talked about this, um, about how she leaves a project in certain areas of her home so that if she's in the living room watching TV with her family, then she's got a project that she can work on that's ready to go right there. And if she's in her car waiting for her kids for something or another, she's got something in her car that she can stitch on while she's waiting in the pickup line or whatever. Um, I know a lot of people do that. They'll have a purse project and a car project, etc. Um... She has something in her kitchen and something in her office, etc. Um, and so I think that that's a really great idea if you are somebody who can flip from project to project. I am not one of those people. Um, and you'll see that here in, in a little bit. Um, I have a hard time bouncing from project to project. But Sherry does it, and so she puts in five minutes here and there, 15 minutes, you know, etc., etc. So... Maybe that is a solution for you if you have projects spread throughout the house so that if you have a spare few minutes here and there, you can put them in. Um, I personally, unless I know that I have an hour, let's say a half hour, if I know that I have a half an hour to sit down and stitch, then I will. 
If I'm like, I might have 10 minutes, I don't even bother. Um, because by the time I get reoriented with the project and I make a decision on which direction I'm taking with it, then that 10, 15 minutes is gone. So that doesn't necessarily work for me, um, but it might work for you. Um, as far as for me personally, I make time. Um, I, I s carve out some me time. I think that me time is important for everybody, regardless of your human situation, regardless of your life circumstances. I think that, and maybe it's because I'm an introvert, but I need that recharge time. I need just to meditate and to think and just some quiet time. So I carve out time every day, give or take, um, just to be sure that I get that. So maybe that's a, another possible solution for you, Robin. Maybe you need to give yourself half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, four hours, whatever your life allows. Um, maybe you just need to carve that out and dedicate that time. We have to dedicate time to other things in our life. We might as well dedicate some time to some self-care. Uh, so I hope that that helps. Uh, Kate from Kate's Crafting Corner, she asks, um, do I use a different highlighter color for every stitching session? Because last time I talked to you guys about how I count my highlighter blocks, etc., etc., And um, I try not to. Um, I used to do that with Mini Pearl where every stitch was highlighted and each day was a different color. And that makes me dizzy. <laughs> I don't like even looking at that. Um, I use primarily just three colors. I use highlighter green, yellow, orange, and sometimes I guess I'll use pink, so maybe four. Um, I get like a pack of five and I rarely use the blue because it's just too dark. Um, I try not to use a different color if I can avoid it. Um, so for instance, with Rose Fairy, I have sections that are in pink. And if I am stitching next to that section, then I'll have to use a different color. But let's say, let's say on a wild hair, you guys know that my Rose Fairy, I got the bottom half of the skirt done. In fact, I think I have the whole skirt done. So let's say I flip to the top half of the of the pattern and I start working on her wings. Let's just say for giggles and such. Um, most of that skirt is highlighted in pink. I could use pink up at the top at the wings again because they won't they won't clash. Sometimes I'll take notes on the how many stitches I have done. So for instance, the lakeside uh, Neocraft Fantasy Sal. If I'm working on a block for that, um, and one day I use pink, come back the next day. I use pink again, but I have counted already what I did the day before, and then I just subtract the difference to tell how much I did this day versus that day. I hope that makes sense. Um, I try not to, to use a different color because it's dizzying. Okay, um, I'm going to skip that question temporarily. Up uh, next, I have a couple of questions about Big Brother. Um, so Stephanie Watson, uh, first of all, she asks if I've ever watched uh, Big Brother Canada, and I have not. Uh, like I said, I only got into Big Brother a few years ago with Danny. It was never my thing, but he's grown up with the show. Um, he's watched it since, I think, probably since the beginning. Maybe missing a few seasons here and there. Um, but yeah, it was not something that I watched regularly until he and I got together. So no, I haven't seen Big Brother Canada. I didn't even know that there was a Big Brother Canada. Um, and then she also wants to know who my favorite is on this season. And <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't particularly like anybody. Um, I mean, not more than others. I, I feel kind of blase about most of the, the cast. Um, I like Alex, um, and woohoo for my big brother team because we got an HOH. Um, it's funny. 
um, I hope that this isn't spoiling anything for anybody, but when Cody went out, um, I liked him so much more in his interview with Julie than his entire time on the show. Um, like, I didn't, I didn't hate him. He just seemed like a normal human outside of the house, which, I don't know, I guess that's a part of it. Um, I don't like Paul. I don't like Jessica. Um... Who else is in there? I don't know. Raven, I kind of like. She's kind of quirky. Um, at Christmas, we'll see. I, I don't know. I'm on the fence about Christmas. Um, Ramses is cool. I don't care for Dominique. Matt and Mark and who else? Jason. All the other guys. Like, whatever. I don't know. I don't have any favorites yet, but it's still early and the show, like, it changes on a dime. You just never know what's going to happen. I mean, like, the, the motto with the show is expect the unexpected. So, like, you just never know. You never know. Um, and then Aaron Smith asked um, who else Danny got um, other than Cody for his, um, his pool team. So he had Cody and he has Alex. And he picked Raven. So Raven was his fourth. Who was his third? Was it Mark? No, it's not Mark. I can't remember who his fourth is. I'm going to look it up and I'll put it down here. Um, yeah. But he picked Raven and now he's kind of like, oh. I don't know if I made the right decision. He picked Raven because Raven is a dancer, and so he thought that um, she would be really good in the endurance or the uh, the flexible um, challenges. And as it turns out, maybe not. So we'll see. Okay. Um, next question is from Alyssa Nicole, and Alyssa has asked me to talk about my um, how I store my projects, and I'm going to do that during my whip parade. But um, this go around, she asked, how do I cut my floss into lengths? Then would I be willing to demo that? And I have a perfect situation. So I brought uh, one of the colors that I'm out of now on a project, and that is 938. So here's how I do things. I know a lot of people will like do an arm length um, and then double that or do whatever they do with it. I don't do that. Um, so... I take off the end and I hold it here and there's a little bit above the end of the ruler here. It's just, just a regular one foot roller. So I wrap it around so you can see it there and then I wrap it around again. And then I cut about there. So my working length or my, excuse me, my length is a little more than four feet because it's wrapped essentially four times around. And my working length is a little more than two feet. So that's how I do it. Um, like I said, I know some people will stretch it out an arm's length or what have you, but that's, that's how I do. Uh, okay, set that over there. Hopefully I won't lose that because I'll need it. Um, okay, and then the last question comes from Hazel Day, and Hazel asks um, on some advice on how to track. She wants to track uh, some of her whips, as well as finishes, as well as those projects that maybe aren't yet started. And I have, like, approximately 12 spreadsheets that I bounce back and forth between. Um, but if you're looking for something that's more concise, uh, kind of all in one place, then... I'm going to refer you to my phone here, um, and I'm going to use the app that almost everybody talks about. I know that Carolyn Mazio has done an extensive discussion about this app, um, as well as Katie the Stash Queen, um, and um, you're, you're about to see a picture of Thor here, so <laughs> just so you know. Uh, so uh, the app is called the X-Stitch app, and that's what the icon looks like right there. Um, and so I'm going to go into that. And when you open it up, it 
brings you to this cover screen and you can edit this picture. And so I put my Frosty Knot Garden because, der. Um, so here's sort of just a very brief run, run through of how I use this app. Um, I have used the inventory app, but I don't keep up to date with it. I have used the shopping list app, but again, I don't keep up to date with it. What I use this app for primarily is the journal. And that is how you might be able to track your whips, finishes, and things that you haven't started yet. Okay, so there's a uh, button down here for journal. And you can see that there are five categories there. Wish list, kitted, started, finished, and all. So just a summation of, of the previous four. Okay, so you will see that my wish list, I've got nothing in there. I might use that for projects that are kitted that I haven't started yet. Okay, I'm going to skip the kitted one for now. Come down to the started, and you can see that I have 66 started. And that is all of my whips, with the exception of those sitting in the kitted section. I wanted to separate out my projects that I'm actually working on this year, so my focus projects, so that I can very easily edit those. Um, so I just recategorize them to kitted so that they are all in that segment. So that includes my 13 year of whips that I have left as well as um, as well as the other two projects that I added into my 2017, the rest of my plans there. And then finished, which is pretty self-explanatory. Those are the projects that I have labeled as finished. So I'm going to go into that one first. And at the top here, you will see that every single one of these projects has a 17 in front of it. That's because this automatically, and you have no control over it, it sorts by the alphabetically by the title you give it. So in order to be able to easily see just the projects that I've finished this year, I put a 17 in front of them. So I finished April in 2017, I finished Big Bang Theory in 2017, etc. Um, and so I can very easily count how many finishes I've got so far this year, and all of those are at the forefront. And then down here, things are not labeled as such, they're again in alphabetical order. Okay, so there is that. Uh, let's go into one of these, and okay. So, there are some things that I don't like about this app. Number one, I don't like the inability to sort by various things. So you can't sort by designer, you can't sort by date started, um, and you can only upload one picture at a time. What I would really love for this app to have is like a, a gallery of pictures so that I could see the progression throughout. That's not a feature that it has, and I don't know that it ever will. I can imagine that that would take an awful lot of um, software development. Anywho, so um, you have this picture here, and this is my fantasy cell, and you can see the designer here. Um, I have it labeled as Doreen Jones, even though it was organized by Lakeside Needlecraft. Technically, Doreen Jones is the designer. Um, I have it listed as status kitted. Um, but that doesn't change any of the other fields. So it says kitted there for the status, and then it has a start date and a finish date. So I could technically leave this in kitted, um, but with a start and finish date in, in, um, added in. I have linen notes, and then if there are any project notes, skin one over one, um, I will put down dates that I finished, uh, have it on earth design pages, um, so, for instance, Faces of Fairy, I finished page one on the 14th of March, etc. Um, what else will I put there? Oh, um, my Opus 2, uh, it says DMC 924 because that's the thread that I'm using. Um, it will also include, like, locations of where the pattern is. So, for instance, if the pattern came from um, a book or a particular magazine, etc., so that's kind of how I use the X-Stitch app. Um, it's got all of them located in one place. It's just, it's limited on the functionality. Um, it's missing some sort features, which I would really, really appreciate. So that is the X-Stitch app. And Hazel, I hope that that helps you out there. 
Um, again, I've got 18 spreadsheets, but they work for me. They won't work for anybody else. I can promise you that. Um, I contemplated going through them all, but like really, it doesn't make any sense for anybody else. Um, it is based on my style and how I like things organized. Um, it's not something that I can mass produce and make a one size fits all kind of thing. Um, so there is that. Um, and the last question comes from Shirley Hickman and Shirley asks if I would be willing to show the back of my heaven and earth. And I will do that uh, once we get to that point, uh, which we are just about to, because I don't have a shout out again this week. Again, I haven't watched Flosstube. Um, I just, I just haven't. I need to. My watch later list is getting out of control again. Um, and it's about to get worse because we are getting closer to the end of the month already. Whatever. Um, so I don't have a shout out, but uh, I hope to next time. So I'm about to get into my whip review, but real quickly because it just occurred to me that the question might happen. Uh, Jess, what's your shirt say? And it says, my Patronus is a hokey bird. Uh, Virginia Tech football kicks off in 47 days against West Virginia. We are playing West Virginia University for the first time in 10 years. Um, it turns out we don't get along very well. <laughs> so we were banned from playing each other for quite a time there. Uh, so we are kicking off at FedEx Field in uh, Maryland, D.C. It's where the Redskins play. Um, it's going to be interesting, I think, uh, because it's been a while since we played it. Anyway, uh, so just thought I'd wear a hokey shirt today. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get into the whip review. I'm going to separate these two out. Um, I'm going to do the projects that I've worked on um, outside of the dog days of summer, and then I'll talk about dog days of summer after the fact. So last week, I was very close to a page finish on my Faces of Fairy 201. And this artwork here is by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. Uh, preview here of what this looked like the last time you saw it and I finished the page the next day um, I got into a really good groove and I just knocked it out because I felt like it so and I was able to do that I have since moved the project to my very long Millennium Bars and I'll show you the reason for that here in just a second um, this has been rolled up for a week. Okay. So, there we have it. Page finish. Woohoo! So, yeah, page four of the pattern. My third page is done. Super, super pleased. Yeah, absolutely love that. Uh, you can totally tell that I didn't fray check this at all. <laughs> So yeah, so the reason that this is now on my super long Millennium Bars, and you can say, you can see there, I'm sure, that it's very skewed. The reason for that is that on my shorter bars, um, it's harder to reach that top right corner on the, um, on the project. And so I put it on my great big long bars so that I can move that section closer to me so that I can reach it a little bit better. Um, and it's the added benefit of, I don't, I'm not working on anything else that's this big right now so it can just live here and I just have to roll it up and um, set it aside so on uh, Thursday I finished the page then I walked away from it because 700 stitches in a weekday for me is um, it requires late night um, so then on Friday I pulled it back out I gritted I put in approximately seven stitches and then I put it down and walked away for the weekend um, so that page three is gridded and it's about 10 stitches wide shorter than a full page. So it's barely, it's barely not a full page. It's barely a partial, but that's okay. 
moving along, trucking along. Okay, so now let's get back to um, Shirley's question about seeing the back. Um, you're not going to see what any of the stitches look like um, because I park and uh, I carry threads and so yeah. That looks pretty good actually. You can see things. You can see the crown. You can see her eyelash makeup thing, her forehead, hair, swan bubble, and swan. That's pretty cool. So, yay, love it. Super, super pleased with the progress. I'll get back to that this weekend um, and continue on. Um, my Heaven and Earth Designs approach shall we say, has changed a little bit. Um, but I'll talk about that more as we get closer to the month of August when I talk about my plans for August. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. So that is that. Uh, fabric here is 25 count Antique White Logana by Zweigart. I'm stitching this one over one full cross. That's the only way that I do. That. Okay, so my primary goal for the 13th was to get that Faces of Fairy page finished. Check, did that. Next was to work on my Elizabeth by Glendon Place. I told you that I was working on this for, um, on this particular day because it was the 19 year anniversary of the passing of my grandma. Um, and this is um, named Elizabeth. Uh, so yeah, so that's what this will look like finished. Uh, flapper needle minder from Julie Nifty Neil Nannies. And preview here of what this looked like the last time I showed it to you. And I am stitching this on a 32 count Belfast in Buttercup by Under the Sea Fabrics. And I didn't get a ton done because I had worked so hard on faces. So I just, I didn't have the brain space to be stitching all that much more. Um, but I did want to work on it a little bit, so I did. And the progress that I made is just in this green leaf. I talked about possibly working on some of the Krennic, but I decided not to fuss with it. Um, just to, to work on some of this big leaf here. So, um, this is the top of page two, and I'm, I've got my threads parked here in page four. So, yeah, just a little bit of progress, a little something to work on and think about grandma and all that fun stuff. So there is that. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to talk about Dog Days of Summer here in just a second. So let's fast track to Sunday, July the 16th. And on Sunday, uh, that happened to be the premiere of the new season of Game of Thrones. And so I decided to start this project. This is by Lolita Maid on Etsy. Um, and it is the Stark House banner. I am stitching this on a 32 count Belfast in Valyrian Steel by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And I'm using DMC 762, kind of an icy blue, silver, gray color. And I didn't make a ton of progress on this particular day, um, but I put in an hour. And so I've got just the very top started there. Uh, I didn't even finish the length that I was working on. And what I've decided, last year during the Outlander, uh, Stitch Mania had an Outlander sale to commemorate the kickoff of the Outlander season on Stars. And so for every Sunday, or maybe it was on Saturday. It might have been on Saturday. Anyway, um, while that show was airing, I worked on an Outlander inspired piece for an hour every um, every week on the day that the, the new episodes aired. So I think it was on Saturday. So every Saturday I worked an hour on this Outlander piece and eventually I finished it. So I thought I'm gonna do the same thing for this. I'm gonna work on this project every Sunday for about an hour uh, until the end of the season. This last second to last season is only seven episodes long. The last season airing next year is only six episodes. So 
uh, there is no way that I'm going to get this whole project done in seven episodes in seven weeks. No way. Um, but I'll make, I'll put in a good chunk of it. So, uh, this fabric is absolutely gorgeous. You can kind of see the purples in there, which just make me so happy. Absolutely beautiful. So there's that. Okay, next on Monday, I finally started Lady Bird Fairy. <laughs> Took me long enough, I know, but I did on, on Monday evening. I don't know what this means for my sows for Birthstone Dragons, um, but I've decided that this week I'm going to work on Lady Bird Fairy, next week I'm going to work on Lady Rose. We'll see what happens. Um, so let me go ahead and show you where I got to. This is what she will look like finished. My needle minder there is a, um, a big old lady bird ladybug, depending on your inclination, um, from Nifty Needle Nannies, but a gift from Belinda. And as you can see, I've started, but I haven't gotten very far, despite the fact that this is day three. Uh, stitching time has been a little soft lately, if I'm honest. Uh, partially to do with this headache, partially to do with just busy and work stuff. Um, fabric here is 32 Count Belfast in Glacier by Picture This Plus. It's like the weave is just denser than what I'm used to for a linen. And I know that that comes with the hand dyed process because everything just kind of shrinks. Um, so it's all right. It's not great. It's not my favorite, but it's all right. Um, making it making it work and it's starting to look pretty nice um, So that is the crown of her head in the darkest brown that 938. I just cut. Yeah, that's that um, And then I've worked on the little peak of a wing That's right there so I will work on this today as well as tomorrow and continue on from there So there is that for John Elliott July Loving, loving that. It's a beautiful pattern. I'm, I'm, yeah. Okay, so next, let's get into talking about Dog Days of Summer. Now, I did not bring any of the projects with me um, because I am going to just, I'm going to insert before and after pictures. If I'm honest, that's the easiest way that I can do this because I, um, there's, there just wasn't a ton of progress, and I intend on showing them in my whip parade coming up here in the future, soon-ish thing. Um, <laughs> so we're just going to do before and after pictures so you can see what I actually did. So let's start with the very first day. The very first day was S is for seaside or seashore or something. Um, and I put an hour into the skin on my Under the Moonlight by Passione Ricamo. And you'll be seeing those here. Uh, the before as well as the after. Um, I worked, I, I did approximately 150 skin stitches, so a little bit of progress. Uh, it's 150 skin stitches I don't have to do later. Then the next day was Saturday, um, and it was U is for umbrella, so you had to stitch on an umbrella or um, something that gave you uh, a feeling like you needed an umbrella, so rain, need shade, etc., etc. Um, and so we got home at about 9.30 on Saturday night, and so I stitched for an hour and called it a day. Um, and I worked on my pumpkin patch farm sampler by the Victoria Sampler, and you'll be seeing the before and afters of that here. Um, and I was able to work enough of the leaves to get down to be able to count down confidently down to the umbrella. So I finished up the umbrella and that was pretty cool to do. Um, those leaves are one over one, um, but they went pretty quick. Um, they are all pretty much the exact same shape, just twisted around. Okay, next, uh, let's see. The next was Sunday the 16th, and that was M is for any designer uh, that starts with the letter M. Uh, 
And so I worked on my elephants by Jane Netley Mayhew and previews here of what it looked like before and after. I worked on this for more than an hour because it took me a really long time to get reacclimated with this pattern. Um, this is in a book and the chart is color and it uses some of those not symbol symbols. In other words, it's a colored block. Um, so it takes some, some reacclimating, especially since I haven't worked on it in almost a year. Um, but I did work on it for a little bit longer because I just, I just love that project. Every time, you know, I'm stitching away and I'm like, okay, I've got to carry this color, this many stitches, etc. Finish that color, sit back, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this thing is so beautiful. Um, yeah, really loving that. Really looking forward to spending a good amount of time on it in August. Um, okay, next was Monday the 17th, where I worked on um, M is for Munchies, so my project for that was Lizzie Kate's Jingles series. I was working on the Noel block, and uh, previews here of what it looked like before and after. I got a really good chunk of progress done on Monday. I was pretty pleased. Um, so you can see that I did two of the peppermints. Eight more to go. I don't love stitching those, but, you know, it's a part of the design, so I will continue on. Um, and then I was able to get down to the mug, as well as the, as well as the uh, cookies down there. Um, so I was able to get some food in there. It was pretty good. Pretty great. Okay, next was yesterday and yesterday. What did I do yesterday? Yesterday is E for eternity, that's right. So I attempted to pull out my fantasy sal by Doreen Jones and Lakeside Nailcraft. Nope, not happening. I was not interested in working on that at all. Um, so I decided not to. Um, and what I decided to do was work on Lady Bird Fairy by Joan Elliott because that is my most recent start, so it's going to take a long time to get it finished. I mean, I had just started it the day before. <laughs> so I worked on that, um, and I worked on that into today. Today is the last day, and I was supposed to work on my Shades of Wine by Northern Expressions Needlework. However, I think that I'm just going to stick with Ladybird Fairy because those ladybugs are red. And I'm at a good point where I can work on one of the ladybugs. So I'm going to do that uh, because today the the task is R stitch with a red floss. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to switch um, because I just don't feel, I don't feel great <laughs> with this headache and I don't feel like switching. So I'm just not going to. So that's it for the things that I have worked on. Um, as far as plans are concerned, the usual suspects, uh, Lady Rose, Lady Bird Fairy, Faces a Fairy, and Birthstone Dragons, maybe at some point. I also contemplated pulling out uh, another project next week for Christmas in July, because the 25th is next week, but we'll see if that happens. I'll talk to you about that if it comes to fruition. Don't know yet. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to Stash Acquisitions. Um, and I'm just going to put this out here right now. I have fallen off the bandwagon, and I'm not even trying to chase it down for a stitch from stash. <laughs> not even going to try. Um, I'm going to continue to try to finish things and try to get back in the black, but I don't know if it's going to happen. I am considerably far behind. Uh, but, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. So, um, we're just going to start from the top and work our way down. Um, and the first thing is my chart for Lady Rose. So this is what prompted this one, two, three stitch order. Oh, so let me talk to you about the color conversion for this. So my plan is to do her skirts in green and then her, um, it looks like, kind of like an apron or a top. Um, it looks like it comes up here a little bit. So I'm going to do that, I think, in the 
in the browns, and then her sleeves I'm going to do in the creams, like that um, Heidi um, conversion of Stargazer. Uh, so, and then I might leave her ribbon sash thing here as gold. We'll just kind of wait and see. I'm going to play with colors and such. So that's my plan for Lady Rose. Um, I have talked to you guys about uh, no charge to travel alone. Um, I need to make mention here that I did not create that role. I'm just following it. Um, the original writer of that role, as far as I know, is Annette from Annette's Acre. Um, and um, she's the first one who said that, so I, I will have to agree. And so I ordered Lady Rose, so I needed to put something else in there. That it needs a flying buddy. So I got... Um, <laughs> this is funny. Uh, so I ordered this because I was concerned about my stitch from Stash, and this is before I jumped off the bandwagon voluntarily. Um, I got this because I thought I might stitch it up real fast and earn some good, quick credits for Stitch from Stash. Now, I recognize that this is totally backwards thinking. I bought something to qualify for a credit, and the credit will never be enough to justify what it cost. But whatever. It's fine. So... I ordered Liberty by Lizzie Kate, and this is a Flip It uh, Celebrate with Charm series. Um, and I have no idea what they all are, but I'm assuming they're all holiday themed. Anyway, so the reason that I bought this one is that it is small, um, and Stitch Mania's Tour de Designers is Lizzie Kate, and the month long sale is Patriotic. So, I considered doing that, but obviously I haven't. <laughs> this. And I don't think that I will. <laughs> it's just going to go in the stash. So apparently 123 Stitch believes also in the no charge to travel alone because they sent me two. I only ordered one, but they sent me a second. And they were nested together like they were holding hands on the flight. <laughs> um, so I'm going to email them and ask them what they think I should do with this. Um, might give it away depending on what they say, but do not hold me to that. Um, and if that happens, those details will be released. So like, don't put your name down for it right now, uh, because it's going to depend on what one, two, three stitch says. So there's those. Um, and it does come with a little charm. Let's see. What is the charm for this one? Oh, it's a very small gold star that goes in the center of that red star there. Okay, next, um, in the interest of talking uh, about no charge from travel alone, thinking about Annette from Annette's Acre, and I needed a piece of fabric to go with my, with my Lizzie Kate Liberty. So I ordered 32 Count Belfast in Platinum, which is Annette's favorite. And uh, so I got a 9 by 13 piece to be able to do that design. And no fabric should travel alone either, so I got a second one. And this one is for uh, the row by Hands On Design. I talked ad nauseum about that and why that chart means anything to me. So I got a piece of fabric to go with it so that I can do that. Again, 9 by 13 platinum. So there's that. Um, it might have been more cost effective to order a 13 by 18 piece, but I kind of like the surging. So, got two instead of one larger. Okay, next, let's move on to something that um, I got from Under the Sea Fabrics. Uh, so, in the interest of getting her, <laughs> her studio back together, uh, Leslie decided to not have a specific June Fabric of the Month um, and instead, she opened up a sale to the um, Fabric of the Month subscribers. I decided not to uh, partake in that. Um, and instead, my Fabric of the Month budget went towards this. And it is the new Mirabilia uh, Renaissance Mermaid. Because I need another mermaid like I need anything. I absolutely love her. 
Um, she is inspired by a Botticelli painting, The Birth of Venus. Um, and it's her pose that's... Ugh, absolutely love that. So that's what I got with my Fabric of the Month budget. And um, I also got these specialty threads. I didn't get the beads because I don't know when I'm starting this, let alone when I'm going to need the beads. But I needed the threads. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so I got the Chronix. Um And this one right here, this middle one, is so dark blue. It's like DMC 939 in real life. Like you can't, you really need good light to be able to tell that that's a navy blue. Um, otherwise it just looks black. But on camera it looks pretty good. So there's that. Those are, these are all number four braids. Uh, this one is um, 018 um, high luster. This is 014 high luster, which I think I have. Oh well. And this is 019. Again, I'm pretty sure I have that. But they're all number four braids, so there's that. And then uh, a couple of water lilies for this one as well. Um, we have sea glass. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeousness. And blueberry. Also really stunning. I like the darker shades in it. Yeah, that's pretty. So there is that for Renaissance, Renaissance Mermaid. Okay, um, next I talked to you guys about, um, I talked to you about how I ordered a contingency plan project for just in case I didn't get to work on either of um, those two projects I had planned for Dog Days of Summer. Um, and that is this sea turtle by Mill Hill from their Spring Bouquet collection. And more gorgeousness there on the back. Yeah, that's pretty. I like that color palette. Obviously, I didn't need this. Um, it arrived on Friday, but just barely. I was watching tracking, and I was like, I don't know if it's going to get here. But it did, because I ordered this from Down Sunshine Lane. And as you guys know, Down Sunshine Lane is impossibly quick with things. I ordered it Friday, or excuse me. I ordered it Tuesday night after they had closed up shop for the day. It was in the mail to me by Wednesday. It was here by Friday. And they're in South Carolina. That was truly amazing. Totally dependent on the U.S. Postal Service, which you can't depend on for anything. <laughs> I, was, I was impressed. So there's that. But nothing should travel alone. And I saw this, and it, it had to come to live with me. Um, and I found a new series that I have to do. <laughs> So thanks, Down Sunshine Lane. <sighs> anyway, it is the Drawn Thread Welcome. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And, uh, yeah, it's a series because they have them seasonally. I believe they have one for each of the seasons, or they will, if they haven't released them all yet. Um, so I know that they have summer, and I believe that they have winter. I think the plan is to have spring, autumn, and Christmas as well. And don't quote me on any of this. I could be pulling this information totally out of the air. Um, but yeah, that's just that's just gorgeous. I wonder, should I pull that out? And this one comes with beads because the blackberries in around the W are done in beads. I love the drawn thread patterns. I have a few of them now, and I just, I love their designs. I haven't started any of them, but nonetheless. So there is that absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I need to stitch this. It's got like everybody's favorite things in here. There's an American flag. There's bees, there's birds, there's fruit and flowers and silk. <laughs> so much silk. So let's see. Uh, this calls for dinky dye silk, needlepoint ink, and thread gatherer silken colors. We'll see if that thread gatherer is still available. Yeah. Gorgeous. I'll probably skip the NPIs, especially white 
because mm -mm, I'm not paying four dollars for a skein of white. No, um, but I'll have I'll have a look at the rest. So there is that. Oh, so excited about that. Um, I have my first patterns from Soda Stitch. So I'm gonna start with the one that inspired this purchase. If you're ordering from Korea, uh, South Korea, you might as well order several because you're gonna pay for shipping. Um, so I'm gonna show you the one that inspired this purchase to begin with. Um, first things first, um, if, um, and this might not mean anything to you, but if Gigi or Pa are watching this right now and um, you might happen to have a little lady near you named Jillian. Uh, please don't let her see this um, because this is for her. Okay, so, um, yeah. So my niece Jillian is uh, four and um, she she's in dance and she's just the cutest thing. So I got this to make for her. Poor thing, she's the only one I've stitched anything for. Um, I did her birth sampler, I haven't done any of her siblings, and, and I got this for her. But isn't it so pretty? Oh, I love it. Flowers, dancing. She's gonna love that, I hope. Or she won't care because she's four. Anyway, um, so uh, nothing should travel that far alone. So I also got this, which has been on my Soda Stitch Wishlist Forever coffee break. Yep, that's pretty. And this one, this one makes me giggle. I'm not gonna lie. Um, this is the Matryoshka dolls in the Princesses. So we have, I'm gonna start on this side. We have Anne from Anne of Green Gables, Rapunzel, Snow Queen, whom I'm assuming is supposed to be Elsa, Snow White, um, Red Riding Hood, and then this one cracks me up. A-I-L-C-E apostrophe S. Lost in translation a little bit there. I mean, that's supposed to be Alice from Alice in Wonderland. I love Matryoshka dolls and Disney princess themed, and not only that, but like they all have RBF. <laughs> That's going to be the title of the episode. RBF Matryoshka Disney Princesses. <laughs> anyway, love this. So cute. And um, looking forward to getting into this. Oh my gosh. These charts are insane. Oh, it's just one big book. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm not showing any chart, but it opens. Yeah, that's wild. Oh, they're so fun. Okay. Anyway, so those are my first Soda Stitch designs. Um, and probably not my last, <laughs> but that was, that was pretty cool. Um, uh, so I, I've debated whether I was going to talk about this. I paid extra for a tracking number. It was coming halfway across the world, so I thought a tracking number would be good, just so I can keep an eye on it. So I paid extra. Did I ever get a tracking number? No. So I guess my question is, is that standard? Like, if you pay for a tracking number, do you ever get one from Soda Stitch? It's fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, they made it here safe. But, like, in the future, I'm not going to pay extra for that if I'm not getting the benefit of it. I've debated on taking it up and, and asking them about it, but number one, they're on vacation right now, and number two, like, it's a difference of $3. I can probably let it go and bank some good karma by just letting it go this time. Um, so, anyway, just curious if that is, if that's the way things go, like, if you pay for extra tracking, do you ever get one? Because um, I didn't, not at all. So I got two charts in the last Have Another Design sale because, again, I voluntarily jumped off the bandwagon for Stitch from Stash. Might as well just, you know, just totally lose it, whatever. So um, I bought two, and I'm going to insert previews of them here. Uh, so the first is Lady Seated at Her Needlework, and this is by a, um, a Hungarian artist. And 
Um, this one, I just, oh, so beautiful. Um, yeah, just absolutely gorgeous. And then the second one, I had Stitch Mania Vote um, because I couldn't decide. And as it turns out, um, asking 10,000 people to decide means that you just have 10,000 people each picking different designs. So um, I narrowed it down to seven and the one that won, not overwhelmingly, it was pretty close, um, but the one that won is Nocturne by Marta Dalek. And I'm actually really excited that this one won because this one has sat on my wish list for the, for, it's probably the longest. Um, and uh, it's just beautiful. And I am looking forward to having that in my stash for a while. As far as starting it is concerned, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. So that is it, I think, for the stash acquisitions. It was extensive, obviously. All right, let's move on to currently obsessing. Um, I don't expect that we have a whole lot left to talk about here. Uh, so currently obsessing, I'm going to this time start with books. Um, what am I reading that I'm currently obsessed with? And I guess you would say that the only thing that I'm reading is The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas. Um, and I talked about the Raid Throne of Glass um, read along going on. I am, I've started with the first one. Technically we're supposed to be into week two, which is book one of the series. This is the novella collection. It's a prequel uh, novella collection. Um, but I read slow and I don't read often and reasons and things. But I did start it, so I'm about 65 pages in. So me, I'm reading. I'm not reading a lot, but I'm reading. Um, and this is Young Adult Fantasy. I gotta tell you guys, I put this here in Currently Obsessing because it's the only thing I'm reading, but it's not really what I want to be reading. Um, what I want to be reading is adult historical fiction or adult generational fiction. Um, so like Ken Follett um, or uh, there's this one that I was reading about today, Paul Astor uh, 4321. Is another book that's on my radar. Um, I'm just in the mood for some historical fiction or generational fiction or just a good stick to your bones kind of good story. Um, and this is young adult fantasy, so it's kind of surface level. Um, it's good, don't get me wrong, it's good. It's just not everything that I am really interested in reading right now. So whatever, I'm reading it for now. I might not stick with this read Throne of Glass thing. I might let it go and um, go read whatever I want, but we'll see. Okay, uh, next I am currently obsessing over Game of Thrones, because who isn't? Um, <laughs> if, you, um, if you're not obsessing over Game of Thrones, then that just means that you don't watch Game of Thrones, or you haven't been able to watch it yet. Um, I was so excited for the premiere, and it was like all sorts of girl power going on in that episode. I was talking with Kim uh, about that. Just total kick-ass episode. Um, it makes me even more sad that this season is so short and that the rest of the series is... We're not long for the rest of the series, but yeah, absolutely love it. Uh, no spoilers here, but um, I was super excited to see that certain person make a cameo appearance. Um, yeah, that was super cool. I knew that I knew that they were going to. Um, that was announced a few months ago, but nonetheless, it made my heart happy. Uh, I like them a lot. Yeah. Anyway, um, okay. And next, uh, this is truly the only thing that I'm actually obsessed with right now in this whole segment, and that's what I'm currently listening to. And. I just heard this song for the first time yesterday, and I've listened to it approximately 18 times since then. And it is Praying by Kesha. And, oh, does that song hit me in the feels. Right in the feels. Isn't that what they say nowadays? Hit me in the feel? Anyway, can't stop listening to that song. 
um, Kesha has gone through a lot. And that song is just a great big F you. And it just, it just gets to me. Oh, so good. And she hits a note in that song uh, that you have to check out. Uh, you have to listen to this song to hear it. Um, and you would think that it might be annoying, but it's not. It's just so perfect for this song. So I don't know if any of you guys have any friends like this, but there are um, one of Danny and I's closest friends. She will do this too. She puts a song on repeat and literally just listens to it over and over and over again. And that's what I've been doing with this song over and over and over again. Um, just obsessed with it. So in fact, I'm like itching to go put it back on. Um, I think I'm going to break out the, the, uh, beats box and play it real loud. Anyway. Okay. So that's it for currently obsessing. Let's move on to knitting. Um, and I have done some knitting, so yay for that. Um, uh, so first things first, I have decided to let the Shawl Society 2 go. Um, I don't think I'll be casting on the August one on August 1st or whenever it premieres. Um, cause I've got the three on the needles right now and I'm just, I'm not keeping up with it. So I'm not sticking to any schedule with it. Um, and that was made apparent by the Vila wrap. Uh, I haven't worked on it. I might have put in a few rows while we were traveling this weekend, but whatever. I'm not super gung-ho about it. Um, so if I'm not gung-ho about it now and I have a lot of work to get done in the next 12 days, like this is not working for me. So yesterday I got a bug in my ear to just finish something. I talked about it last time about how I think that maybe my knitting bug just needs a finish to, in order to revitalize. And so that's what I did. So I have a finished object. <laughs> really unexpected because everything that I had going had a long way to go le yet. But nonetheless. So this is my meteor shower shawl. And I'll talk about what I did uh, here in just a second. So. This is the Meteor Shower Shawl by Very Busy Monkey. This is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. And I started this in March of last year for an Eat Sleep Knit Knit Along. Um, I knit it out of Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light, which is 100% superwash merino in a single ply fingering weight. And this pink here is uh, Pretty in Pink, Molly Ringwald, of course. And then the Black with, uh, it's probably not going to show just because it's striped, but um, there are some blue hints in it and some gray hints. That is Thunderstorm in the same base. The top is where things are different. So this shawl is designed with this textured stitch here, and it's easier to see in the solid color. Okay, so you see that there? It's called a blackberry bush, and it's just a textured, uh, textured stitch, little bumps. Okay, so the top of this shawl was supposed to have that in the black in the thunderstorm, um, and it was a knitted on border, so it was knit sideways. Um, and I'll be honest, I hated it. I hated doing it. Um, I've I think I've shown it on. Um, the podcast before and the videos before where um, I had an inch or two of this border done and this project has languished for over a year at that stage because I just I just didn't like it so when I started working on this project yesterday I started working on that border as it was and I was like what the hell am I doing I'm miserable. I don't want to do this. I am just a knitted on border away from finishing this design and I hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. I don't hate it, but I really didn't like it. 
Anyway, so my original thought when looking at this design is that it would not be a knitted on. It would just be, it would just be long rows of that blackberry stitch, blackberry bush stitch, whatever, um, rather than short rows but sideways. Um, and then my plan was to use the Molly Ringwald and to continue this I-cord border. Um, so the whole thing has an I-cord. And so my plan was to bind off in an I-cord on top of that 10 rows of the blackberry bush. Um, just to continue that border on, you know, it comes up here and comes across. Just to, I don't know, to make it a little bit, to give it a little bit of a clean edge. I really like the I-cord bind off look. But... With the way that this blackberry, the, with the way that this edge was charted to be stitched, that sounds like such a stitching term, but whatever. Um, I wasn't going to be able to do that, at least not in any of my own ability. And so I ripped out what I had done of the border. And I'm sitting here looking at my needles, and I've got just this, you can see this last black row sitting there. And I'm like, all right. Here's what I can do. I can try to math out this black bush stitch by myself so that I can knit it in long rows, just like I thought it would be. Um, or I can just I cord bind off now. So I mean, obviously that's what I did. So that's that's that. And I I like it. Now I will say that this shawl is not as balanced as the original might be. Um, it is very, very pink <laughs> with a little bit of black and it definitely looks like it ended early and it totally did. Um, it ended early. But if I'm honest, I'm not that bothered by it um, because it means that I got it finished and I don't hate the process of it and it's just gonna be a little bit different. It's just going to be a little bit short. I don't even know if I can wear it like this, like a kerchief, but whatever. It is what it is. I don't know that I would ever actually wear it anyway because I picked black and pink. Who knows why? <laughs> I don't wear black and pink. Not usually. Anyway, uh, so it's finished. It took me, what, 18 months? <laughs> but it's done. And so I have to weave in ends and block it out. That will help it grow a little bit. Um, because I will give it a good stretch while blocking. Um, that I-cord bind off, it takes a little while because you just feel like you never get any stitches bound off, but I really just like the look of it. It's very pretty. So there's that. All done. Done, done, done. Meteor shower shawl. So, I picked a project, I worked on it, and then I finished it. And this sounds like really silly, but like that, I needed that. And it kind of, it did revitalize my knitting bug. Like it was like, all right, so I can set this goal and then I can achieve it. So I was like, all right, so do I have to go back to my Vila shawl? Nope, I sure don't. I don't even feel like it. So I was like, okay, what do I work on? Uh, after I finished that, I had 12 projects in the needles. That's a lot. So let me not do that. Um, let me random number generate and then we'll go from there. So I hit random number generator and it pulled this design. This is the Dockside Mystery Knit Along. It was a mystery from last summer because, I mean, almost everything is a mystery from last summer. Um, and it is by Alicia Plummer. And I have no idea where I was the last time. I have this stitch marker here, but I have a feeling that I just never moved it. So when I picked this up yesterday, I was barely into this eyelet section up here, um, just barely. And I know you guys are looking at this and you're going, Jess, that's really big. Are you almost done? I'm close-ish. I mathed it out because I do. Uh, I've got like 30 rows to go. Um, 
so I'm getting pretty close to the end on this one. Um, this is being knit on US size 8 5 millimeter needles. Um, and the yarn is, um, I'm committing hand dyed yarns in, but whatever, I'll deal with those consequences when they get to them. Uh, this is what I have left of the second ball, I think. Second skein, uh, this is Malabrigo Rios, which is 100% Superwash Merino, uh, worsted weight in the color Sandbank. So I don't have a whole lot left of that, maybe one or two rows left. And then uh, I will add in my last skein. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Ooh, it looks darker. I might be in trouble. <laughs> we'll see. There might be a very strong color difference between these two skeins, or it might be totally unnoticeable. Um, when you're working with hand-dyed yarns or independently dyed yarns, you're supposed to alternate. I just didn't. I didn't feel like dealing with that, so, so I didn't. I might incorporate this. Um, like, I'll knit this last row, and then I'll incorporate this and alternate for the last couple of rows of this skein, although looks like there might be a couple of rows left in it and that's about it anyway um, so yeah loving that so my ultimate plan here is that um, I don't know that I'm gonna stick with it until I finish it I do have only 30 rows left but I only have seven rows left of this section and so what I think I might do is finish out this section and put it down unless my bug is like no nope, stick with that for a little while longer We'll just kind of see. I'm just I'm just going with my mood. Um, if I decide to quit early, then I'll random number generate and pull something else. Um, so yeah, this shawl is really cool. Um, I do not like the way that Alicia Plummer writes her patterns. So if you are new to shawls, I would suggest starting somewhere else. Um, hers get a little bit confusing. Um, but so we started with this. Uh, where is it? There it is. Stockinette, then uh, some loose eyelets, then this cool dropped stitch section, then some ribbing, some more eyelets, and then we'll have another drop stitch section, and then some more ribbing, and then bind off. So, um, I think that when I get to the end of the pattern, just make sure that no stitches have fallen off. Um, when I get to the end of the pattern, I'm just going to carry that ribbing at the very end long enough to use the rest of this yarn. Because I think it would be really great to just use up all of the yarn that I had. Um, so, there is that. And this one is going to be so great in fall because it's worse to weight. It's nice and heavy. Oh, it's going to be great. So that is that. And, ladies and gentlemen... That's everything. We did it. It was another long one, um, as they all are. Um, real quick before I go, my plan is to do that whip parade, but I have no idea when that's going to happen. We will see. Um, and uh, what else? There was another thing, but I can't remember. Um, so I will call that a day. Um, I need to go medicate and get to editing and try to get rid of this headache. Um, so I will thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, thank you for your continued support. And I will see you next time. As always, be kind.